Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a pattern called Star Bloom. It's from Basic Gray and it's got all these interesting star shapes in it. And I love the colors that are used on the pattern there, all those nice neutrals. But just for fun, I want to do something completely different. So I've picked out this jelly roll called Garden Society. And the only other thing we need besides this is a background and I'm going to use a nice solid white. This is of course a jelly roll pattern and we need 40, we actually need 36 of the 40 strips that are included in the roll here. So I'll just pull off a couple that are maybe too light or if I've got a duplicate and then we'll, we will use all the rest. One thing that the pattern mentions right at the beginning is that we need to use 42 inches of each strip. So you have to be careful when you cut. So this one here, it's folded. 42 is right here and I've got plenty of length there. There's only a little bit extra. And I pulled out some of my other jelly roll strips that I had left over because sometimes the selvage is kind of wide and I wanted to see. So here's 42 here. I've got plenty of space. 42 here, these are both from Moda. Here's one from Robert Kaufman. We've still got 42. Even this one, which has a very wide selvage, I can still get 42, but you want to be somewhat careful when you cut that you've got, that you don't cut off too much from that selvage when you start making your subcuts. It's a good idea to iron your strips open because we need to be careful with the cutting and because we're going to use this folded part, I'm going to give each one a quick press before I cut it. All the strips are ironed nice and flat and I've stacked up, I think I've got six in each stack. You might want to stack less if you don't like to cut six at a time. So I'm just going to cut a little bit off of this edge and then I'll make all the sub cuts. Every strip gets cut exactly the same and I can't give you the sizes because it's not my pattern, but it is very clear and easy to follow. We need two and a quarter yards of background and that's going to also get cut into strips and then subcut. Everything is cut out and we can start making our blocks. There is only one block. This is a one block wonder quilt. That block repeated over and over in different shades will make the whole quilt. So we need some of these from one fabric that are a little bit bigger than that dotted gray. Those pieces are a little smaller and here's what we need. The biggest piece that we cut from the jelly roll, we need two of that size. The second longest piece, we need one of those and the next size down, we need one of those. Then from a different fabric, a fabric that has a little contrast. We need two of the smallest piece and two of the next size up. From the background, we need one of these rectangles and we need 12 of the squares. With eight of the 12 squares, we need to mark the back of them along the diagonal before we can sew with them. So I like to use a very light pencil line. So I'm just going to line this up on the corners or slightly over from the corners so that when I draw, the line goes right along the diagonal there. And there's other marking tools. You don't have to use a pencil, but a pencil with a light line works really well. Let's start with these two pieces here. They're both the same size and we need to put a square on each of these facing the opposite directions. So this one's going down that way, this one's going down that way, and I'm going to stitch right along the line that I drew. Same thing with the second rectangle here. Now 
and each of these get a second square on them. So the second square on this one, the line is going parallel to that. So it's going exactly the same way. And all I have to do is lift this up here so it's out of the way. And then I can stitch that one on. Exact same procedure here. This second piece, it's parallel. The line is parallel. Fold that out of the way and stitch it on. And we also have a pair of pieces. It's these two longer matching pieces and they each get a piece on this end going the opposite way and a piece on the other end. Again, this one's parallel and this one's parallel. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch them on. All of the corners get pressed to the outside. So I'm just going to take that background piece and the edges will meet if you fold it right along that line there. So we'll get both of them pressed. Then add a little steam. And those extra layers on the back here, we don't want all that bulk. So I'm going to cut off those two pieces there, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. And we'll do that on both edges here. The large pieces were ironed exactly the same way. So we've got two sets here and all these pieces, and we are ready to build our block. We're going to start with a square of the background and a square of the color, and then we're going to stitch this on top. I'm going to follow all the direction arrows in the pattern for which way the um, seam allowances get pressed. They figured it all out so that you can get your block pretty fast. So just pay attention to all the little arrows in the pattern. So my first seam allowance went toward the dark. This one is going to go away here. Next step is to add this piece on the side. That's gonna go on the bottom, but it needs to have this piece added to it. So let's put this one on here. It is the right length now. Slide that out of the way. And this seam goes that direction. And you'll see with careful piecing, that intersection will meet here. Mine's not perfect, but I'll get better as I go. Let's add this guy. And this intersection will go that direction. You can start to see right away which way it ought to go because this one's going that way. So I know we're gonna want that one to go that way because when we put these together now, these are going in opposite directions, making it easy to match. We'll press this seam allowance down and I'm just finger pressing as I go here. You can, of course, at any point, take your block, your partial block, over to the ironing board. These pieces will fit on here, but each of them needs to have a background square added to it to make it the right length. This seam allowance is going to go that direction because this one's going that way and this seam allowance I pressed up because that one's going down and I'm going to add this. It's a little bit easier to just spin it around here. And let's press this one toward the middle. 
And again, the pattern has all the directions for which way to put your seams on it. It's very easy to follow. This seam goes toward the dark there. And then the very last step is to put these long pieces on. And all we have to do is add that piece to make that the right length. And it will fit after we stitch this on. This seam is going towards the center. Add that piece. And this will fit right on there. I love how everything lines up. The blocks are really pretty easy to sew. This seam goes away. And that is all you have to do to make your first block. So I'm gonna press this up and get it nice and flat. And then I'm gonna continue with all the rest of my pieces and make all the blocks. The blocks are all stitched up and we're ready to lay out the quilt. We have options. There's not only the layout that's on the front of the pattern, there's two other layouts you can do these in. So I'm gonna start with this one, which has kind of a burst of color in the center and then we're gonna add blocks around it. That's layout number one. We start off with this tiny little patchwork starburst and then it just kind of explodes out from there. There's bigger and bigger patterns surrounding the center. It's very centered, very balanced. Here's layout number two. For this layout, I specifically put the colors in rows. So we have a big row of blue, we have a row of the peachy orange, there's a row of aqua and some green here, and that makes the quilt have a little more structure when the colors are grouped like that. So this is the third layout, and I'd be interested to know which layout you like the best, so let me know in the comments. For me, this is my favorite one. I love that it's got these big stars here, but there's also these smaller ones in between, and I think that makes it very interesting. It's real easy to sew the quilt together from here, just put it together in rows and sew all the rows together. Once that's done, we can load it onto the quilting machine. The quilt is loaded up and it's time to pick a thread color. Any of these would work. I think this would look really nice. I'm not sure if it would fight with the patchwork. Even the white would look really nice. That will blend in with the background and it really won't show very much, even on the darkest it won't show too much. Um, got a nice light peach here that matches all the different prints. Then we've got two different shades of blue. I don't think there's a wrong choice here, but I'm going to go with the light peach. For the quilting pattern, I'm going to use Spirals Galore. This is one of my favorite patterns. I like it because it's got some big swirls and some little swirls there. You can see it a little better there. And I, it's pretty continuous. It fills up all the space, but it's very interesting. The Star Bloom quilt is all done, and I just love how each of the blocks has four different colors blooming from that little star there, and then this has four different colors blooming from that star. It's very interesting, all the different things you can look at. I like a quilt like that, where the more you look at, 
the more you look at it, the more you find to see how interesting it is. The quilting pattern with these big and little swirls, it doesn't fight with any of the patchwork. It just looks great. This is 60 by 60 inches. There's no borders, but of course you could easily add a border to make it bigger. Now for the back, this quilt is bigger than one width of fabric. So I'm going to have to have a piece back. I'm going to have to have a seam somewhere in my back if I'm not using an extra wide piece for the backing. So what I did is I took this fabric here, which is sometimes called cheater cloth. It's kind of an unhappy name, but it looks like patchwork, but it's just printed like that. I took one panel of that, and then I took another piece of fabric the same length and split it and put half over here and half over there. And that makes a very nice, interesting, balanced back. Thanks for watching our video today. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions about the pattern, you can leave them in the comments below the video and I'll be sure to answer them. Now, at the end of each video, we like to do a giveaway. Today's giveaway is a pattern called Building Blocks. And this is made with a jelly roll. This is a jelly roll from Riley Blake called Sonnet Dusk. It's got these pretty butterflies. It's got all these nice dark colors. It's very easy to make the pattern. We have a free video that shows you how, but today you can win this one. All you have to do is click the link below the video that says giveaway and put in your name and your email address. We can send this to a winner anywhere in the world. So good luck. Now, if you like our videos and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us out. Happy quilting!